Welcome to the <laughs> search for the funniest nihilist. Yes. Um, thrilled to introduce our next comedian to you. She has a Master of Accountancy from Auburn University. Auburn! I can't believe none of you yelled War Eagle. Uh, I knew it, I knew and it. And stay with me, folks. It gets better. She once worked as a telemarketer selling vacations to Branson, Missouri. Oh, my Lord. People from Branson can't cheer that loud. No. No. <laughs> also, the first time we've had a shout out for Perry Como. Okay. Today, she is the Conference Benefits Officer for the North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church. Pe Pepper cheers from the Methodists. She was last year's first runner-up, and she's back to bring the funny for another year. Ladies and gentlemen, Methodists and Baptists alike, here is Amy King! Goodness, y'all, it is great to be back again. Um, as always, my biggest fans are here. <laughs> my, my parents. And I thought I'd use this opportunity with all of you as witnesses to come clean about something they don't know about me. I hope you're all sitting down. <sighs> Mama, Daddy, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I wanted to tell y'all, but I just didn't think your cattle farm and hearts could handle it. I mean, it is scandalous, I know. And it's not because I care about animals. I mean, I do, just not enough to not eat them. <laughs> no, it's because I don't cook meat very well. Okay, okay technically I cook it too well. I just... I just have a lot of anxiety about meat being cooked all the way, so I just cook it to death. <sighs> and once I realized it was cheaper to buy charcoal than to make it, bec becoming a vegetarian was the only solution. So can I get a, a round of applause from all my dieters out here? Yep. Thank, thank y'all for proving that you cannot be on a diet without telling people you're on a diet. <laughs> but the rub is, people can't be like, oh, I am so glad you were on a diet. Because then they're basically insinuating that you should be on a diet. And that's never a good look for anyone. And if you are on a diet, you are probably at least a little bit hungry. And you could snap it just any minute. But I had to tell y'all I'm a vegetarian because the first rule of Veggie Club is telling people about Veggie Club. So the best thing about being a vegetarian is there's just no limit to the amount of food that you can eat. Or at least that's what I assume. I did go to a buffet restaurant where I realized later that the price included just one trip to the buffet which I think we can all agree is very hateful. <laughs> I was informed of this upsetting policy on my next trip. They must have had a picture of me from the first time when I made five or six visits. And this time the waiter said, ma'am, the price only includes one trip to the buffet. Oh, is this, is this new? No. This is not new. And you are 100% sure? <sighs> yes, I am sure. I looked that waiter dead in the eye and said, I have been training my whole life for this. <laughs> Finally, all those church potlucks and family reunions and trips to the Golden Corral were going to pay off. 
I wish y'all could have seen my plate. It was like my first time to eat after getting out of prison. <laughs> and you know I'm straight-laced if being a vegetarian is my idea of rebelling. I mean, I didn't even drink until I turned 21, except for that one time at band camp. How me and my two best friends at all of 17 convinced the girl at Walmart to sell us some Bartles and James fuzzy navels, I will never know, but we knocked one back. And then we were sick. And not because of the effects of the alcohol, but our little Baptist hearts just couldn't handle having drunk Satan's own moonshine. <laughs> and... Any buzz we might have gotten from that artificially wine flavored wine cooler was consumed by our fear that our parents would find out we'd been messing around with the unholy spirit. <laughs> that happened 20 years ago, and we have never mentioned it even to each other, so that felt really good to get off my chest. <laughs> we were just some really high-anxiety young people. I mean, caffeine pills were all the rage when we were in high school. So, of course, the three of us took one, and then we were worried sick that people were going to find out that we had taken drugs, and we didn't know if we needed to turn ourselves in or how, how one even goes about turning themselves in for taking caffeine pills. The police station felt wrong, and we didn't have a coffee shop, so <laughs> we were just at a loss. In our hearts, we just knew we were one step from becoming Courtney Love, and the only cure, <laughs> the only cure was suspension or jail, but turns out our jittery confessional tears were for naught, as caffeine pills are not illegal, and our ninth grade science teacher didn't report us to the DEA. <laughs> we just grew up so pure in rural Alabama, I mean... I only found out a couple of weeks ago that kissing and making out are the same thing <laughs> and that making out is not getting to third base and I was incredibly scandalized that they are both just kissing and that maybe making out was not as big a sin as I'd been led to believe. And for a really long time when my husband was out of town working, if people asked what I w would do when he wasn't there, I would say, oh, Netflix and chill. Before anyone bothered to tell me that that did not mean laying around alone watching Netflix. <laughs> laying around? Yes. Alone? No. <laughs> but, you know, at least all of this unreasonable anxiety has not eased up any. <laughs> but at least I'm not anxious about normal things like public speaking or going to the dentist, or major surgery. Um, however, things that I am anxious about, being in swimming pools with strangers. And that means any swimming pool, hotels, fitness centers, Jay Gatsby's house. <laughs> th th thank you, nerds. <laughs> And I must tell y'all, nothing bad has ever happened to me in a swimming pool with strangers or even with non-strangers. I mean, probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me in a swimming pool is being held under too long when me and my cousins were playing baptism. And <laughs> Listen, my aunt had an above-ground swimming pool. Because when, when you're a child in the Baptist church growing up in the South, any swimming pool is a baptistry for blasphemous children. <laughs> and we weren't, we weren't just dunk and done. No, we baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's not much you can do in above-ground swimming pool, but you can save all your cousins from eternal damnation over <laughs> and over. Now, I will admit that despite all these baptisms, I have backslid a bit. On my vegetarianism, 
I mean, who can blame me if I have a little bite of a hamburger or a little nibble of fried chicken or an entire plate of Slopes barbecue? I have thought about eating meat at home and just being a vegetarian in public, but I must tell you, being a vegetarian has not improved my meat cooking skills. It has improved my ability to pretend some beans mashed together are a hamburger skills. Mostly, I just feel bad about lying to my parents. You know, maybe with all this lying, I do need to get baptized just one more time. Someone just throw some water up here on me. We'll wash away this sin and turn it into a different kind of contest. Thanks. Y'all have a great night. Amy King, everybody. Keep it going.